everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Edgeworth. Plus, we've just been cruising right along, right, Tomo? How do you feel about that, brother? He's doing, he's asleep. Here's your seed. B-V-V-E-M-2-T-4. Oh, Tomo. What is it like when a cat grips something with its paw? It's like the cutest thing ever. It's like, oh, he thinks he's people. <laughs> He's hugging the box, but is he actually hugging the box? I don't know. Oh, Tomo. It's one of those times you should probably put the webcam on, but whatever. Frick you, I won't do what you tell me. Still, you know, Team Unity Plays Fortnite might not have been the most uh, beloved series we've ever done. But every time I hear Killin' in the name by Rage Against the Machine, which is pretty often, because it's on the workout playlist. I always hear, Those who glad are doomed to die! We had other lyrics, but, you know. <laughs> what a game. Anyway. What a game. This is, uh, again, it's been pretty... Agile day as far as Isaac goes. I started recording a little earlier this morning than usual. Tonight, Kate and I are taking a rare non-Saturday night off. There is, um, we're doing, you, you gotta let me finish this before you react. We're going to adult night at, uh, the Science Museum. What is adult night? Uh, basically, adult night is when you want to go to... A cool museum, I can but forever. we should take it. I, I'm, you know, 30-year-old Boomer NL doesn't apologize for the advantages given to him. 25-year-old NL thought he had to atone for the good luck that he's had in Isaac. 30-year-old NL is like, nah, dude. You give me epic fetus, I'm taking it. Gives us more, more banter agility as well. It's an all stats up to our conversation. Um, it's when you want to go to a cool museum, but you know that that cool museum most of the time is uh, overrun with children, which is fine, you know? I've been to uh, I've been to the Vancouver Aquarium in the middle of summer several times. There's a lot of kids, so what, you know? It's the freaking aquarium. What do you expect? At the same time, to be able to go outside of working hours, be surrounded by like-minded individuals. It's kind of a cool thing. Plus, I've never been to one before. Excited to see how it goes. So I thought maybe... It's the classic, you know, make your own hours uh, compromise where I'm like, yeah, I can take a night off and I'll just start working early. <laughs> So the net uh, amount of work being done is probably like exactly the same. So it's not really taking time off, but it feels more relaxing. So rather than phrase that as a negative, isn't that like a win-win? Everybody gets their videos. I don't feel the anxiety and yet still we get a little bit of therapy out of it. That seems like a big, big positive, which is a big pog as far as I'm concerned. Two of hearts. No thank you. How about more like the two of farts, because you stink, buddy. I don't know why. It's like I had like three different waves of laughter there. The first one was like, haha, farts. The second one was like laughing at myself for laughing at farts, because it wasn't a good joke. And then the third one is like, why are you taking yourself so seriously? And then being like, hey, you're right, brain. It was, that, was a, that was like a five alarm chili of laughter. Full health. This run is extraordinarily good. This is poison bombs now, I think. I mean, obviously it's poison bombs, but it's also poison, you know, missiles. I'm gonna take this opportunity, because we don't need to lean forward. I'm gonna move the mic. Oh, take the Hermann Miller down to relaxation levels. Be good to go. What do you got for me here? Oh! It's also, uh, it's one of those things where, like, I've lived in Vancouver 
I am gonna take it. I I think I would still rather have prayer card just for just for safekeeping, but um, I've lived in Vancouver now for uh, seven years, almost like to the day. And I still have done almost none of the tourism stuff that you do in, when you're in Vancouver. I've never hiked uh, the Grouse Grind, which is, is just, you know, if you're into hiking, look, I, I think I could get into hiking, but I need like a, I need a trip sitter. Because <laughs> I, I am still at that point where when people tell me they like hiking, I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, I like walking, but, like, what's the difference? Like, a hike is just, like, an uphill walk, and it's it's maybe beautiful. I don't know. I, I Because I've never known anybody to be into hiking, uh, like, none of my family or friends have really been into hiking, I'm like, I've never... I don't know. I, I need someone to explain the, the, the joy, the joie de vivre of hiking, and then maybe I could get into it myself. I mean, I've been going for long walks, uh playing Pokemon Go, so I'm not saying it's outside of my wheelhouse. I'm not looking down on the hiking. I'm just saying I, you know, maybe I gotta peep the subreddit or something. R slash hiking. And then what's hitchhiking? Like, I know what it is, but how does that relate? Why do they share a, a suffix? The bean. That's my penance for making those fart jokes earlier. I know it, you know it, let's move on. And I've never been to Science World, which is where the adult night is happening here. And I, I've, uh, you know, I've been to a lot of Canucks games. I've never been to a Vancouver Whitecaps or a BC Lions game. When you're in your own city, you do a lot less uh, tourism-driven stuff a lot of the time. Right, Tomo? I mean, Tomo's never been. He hasn't been outside of the apartment except uh, a couple times. Go to the veterinarian's office or to get groomed, right, buddy? Sorry, I'm having a conversation with my cat, and if you don't like it, you can leave, okay? So I am excited for that. Uh, help me. The only thing, and it's not a good thing to complain about, because it sounds like, um... It sounds entitled. But there is one negative thing about Epic Fetus that is not even really that negative, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Because otherwise we won't have anything to talk about with respect to Epic Fetus, or maybe this run in general. The run... eventually hits almost like an algebraic sort of asymptote for, for time to finish rooms, you know? Your damage stat combined with the just efficacy of the bombs in the first place, puts you in a position where most enemies will die, and many bosses even, will die in one hit. However, you're only ever going to be dropping bombs at this pace. Unless we can get a, like, a quad shot or something like that. So the only negative, I'll say, is it gives us a huge bit of damage, without a doubt. However, it also doesn't scale that well. It stays great into the late game, but it's not like we can get many more items that will piggyback off of this and you'll be like, wow, what an incredible synergy. You know, we're pretty much... The, the run is determined for us now, which, trust me, I'm stoked about. But it does, uh, it does mean this is probably roughly as good as it's ever gonna get, unless maybe we can get like, you know, Sack Dagger, um, Unicorn Stump, or something like that, but, you know, no big deal. I'm just, <laughs> I'm embracing this new form of Isaac where I no longer feel bad about getting good items over and over. I think it's become clear, you know, I no longer need to nerf myself in order to consistently lose runs, so let's just, uh, take what the game gives us. If it wants to give us amazing stuff, I'm gonna take it, especially because the memory of Curse of the Unknown Isaac's Heart is still very fresh in my mind. Um, hold up. I think... I might get rid of Prayer Card for Diplopia, but I would rather get a deal with the Devil. Which we did. And then maybe duplicate our items on it. 
just because of the weirdness factor, I'm I'm into this. And I'll level with you. We could probably take both. In fact, we should take both in that case. So this will be... You want to do the obstacle course? Somebody play the wipeout theme. So you got to get in and grab this. Okay. So far, so good. Oh, we were so close to greatness. <laughs> Still, is is was it worth it? I don't know. It is and it isn't, right? Like... I'm super happy that we have uh, two... Uh, well, I mean, Mob of the Void to begin with is probably not going to do much for us. This is one of those weird situations where we'd probably rather have a Thame. But uh, two Harbingers is kind of funny. And hopefully we're just, you know, beyond the point where we could die. And that's why I stuck with Prayer Card. Apart from A, like, not having any other options once we ran out of money. Like, I forgot we can't fly just seems like a cool way to live your life here, you know? Have a lot of HP and spend a lot of HP. We work hard and we play hard. Dude, I'm gonna be... Here's here's where I'm at in my uh, advancing adult age, you know? I know no more bits about being old. No, it's not like that. These are not bits about being old. These are bits about being responsible. Um, we're probably gonna move pretty soon. When we move, like, I'll be, the central reason for moving is my office is just too small, you know? Uh, it... You can, you could live with this, it's not like inhuman conditions, it's not like torture, but, I mean, it's... Closing in on the end of September, it's 30 degrees Celsius in this room. There's no window. Um, and I can touch, if I just reach out and like T-pose right now, I can touch both walls. As I add more, you know, peripherals and stuff like that, um, you know, it's becoming clear that I'm kind of outgrowing this office. The number, well, one of the top things I'm excited about when we move is having the ability to like reset up like my desk. This is just, like, the desk I'm using right now, I just went to Ikea and was like, it's a desk. It's not a good setup for this chair. Oftentimes, I, I end up in one of two situations right now. I raise the chair too high um, so that my wrists are flush with the desk. Then my feet have to sit on uh, this footrest. And it's not bad, but it's not the most comfortable. The other thing I do is make it so my feet sit flush on the footrest or flush on the floor, but then usually my wrists are kind of torqued while I'm recording, which is obviously just, I mean, close to unacceptable unless you want to end up wearing a, you know, a wrist protector for the rest of your life. So, you know, I think young me and, and young people in general just have the attitude of like, whatever, dude, it doesn't bother you that much. But, you know... You got to think about the future as well when it when it will bother you. And just like every night when I close my eyes just before bed, I don't even want one of those uh, sitting standing desks so that I stand more often. You know, I'm I don't really care about the health benefits of a standing desk, but I want one of the ones where you can actually adjust the desk height so that I can constantly keep it in the most comfortable position. Cuz you know, it's like some video games, you want to play them on the couch, you want to lean back, you got a controller. Some video games, you got to lean forward a little bit more and read what the text on the card says, if you know what I mean. And the addition of a microphone does make the, the whole ergodynamic ergo setup a little bit touchier, you know? Anyway, that's, that's where I'm at in my life right now. <laughs> I'm excited about Elias Pettersson's sophomore season. And I'm excited about finally having a deck, a, a desk, sorry, that's ergonomically perfect. People will come over and they'll be like, nice desk. And I'll be like, yeah, it keeps my wrists and ankles at exactly the right angle as to minimize the risk of repetitive stress injury. People under the age of 30 are going to be like, weird where's the where's the rgb lighting people over the age of 30 are just gonna they're gonna get down and genuflect at that exact moment 
Can I also, I need to say a big thank you to the Isaac Old Gods uh, for really blessing me with a series of very fast runs today. They didn't have to, I don't want to rush through any runs. You know, I had plenty of time this afternoon. But, you know, if you get several 20-minute runs, thank you for the 20-minute runs, you know? I'm, I'm extremely appreciative. Feels nice. I don't think I've had this, like, pace of play in Isaac for a long, long time. Some form of mapping is still worth something. You know what? I'll spend five cents on this. It was not worth it. Don't blow up on me. Give me something good. Eh. Can live with it. I don't expect Fanny Pack to be what we're looking for, but that's okay. It's a very groovy combination, is all I'm trying to say. Dude, did you know pharmacies sell video games now? I know it's it's a weird tangent. We were at the post office yesterday. Um, as with many Canada Post locations, it happened to be inside of a pharmacy. The pharmacy has an electronics section. I I've seen it before, but it never dawned on me as being strange. I guess until I went in and there was like a row of flat screen TVs. And I was like, you can buy a television at a drugstore now? I don't even, like, disbelieve it, you know? I mean, like, I buy, like, 95% of the products in my life from the same website. Books, tongue scrapers, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying you gotta be an authority on a TV to sell it, you know? In the modern day, you just sort of, like, you know, you pop it out of the box, right? <laughs> and you're like, this is a... It's a Samsung OLED. You saw it on, you saw a commercial on television? Yeah, okay, here you go. That'll be, you know, like $900 or whatever. Um, it just, it, it struck me. These, these drug stores are becoming like, uh, you wanna, you wanna have a bizarrely, uh, apocryphal statement? Is that the word I'm looking for? I think so. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do this. <laughs> I thought about it at first, then I was like, this is not going to help us kill enemies any faster. Hold on, what does apocryphal mean? A story or statement of doubtful authenticity, although widely circulated as being true. That's not what I was looking for. The term I was looking for was an anachronism. Which is something that... Uh, is not of the time it's supposed to be from. Because what, what I was gonna say, an anachronism is like if you watched a movie that takes place in the 1980s and somebody pulled out like an iPhone. You know, you would be like, that's, ding, you know, I can't get it. But uh, I was gonna say these drugstores are like in-person Amazon locations. <laughs> Hold on, is that a tinted rock? It is not. I'll tell you though, I am worried about one thing right here. That that drugstore bit's going nowhere. You know, I was workshopping that for my new Netflix special. People weren't ready for his drugstore joke. Hey, you can't say that. I haven't watched a uh, stand-up in a while. Am I missing anything in the world of stand-up? Watch a little bit of the new Dave Chappelle. I mean, it sounds like I'm trying to avoid the controversy surrounding it, but really, like, I didn't get to any controversial material yet, so I just have no opinion, like, whatsoever. You know what I watched on TV the other day? I, I've been working my way through HBO Go, just out of, like, inertia and also because we, you know, we bought it for Game of Thrones, but honestly, I'm stoked that we've kept it around. If anything, the, the blessing of Game of Thrones Season 8 being really, really not that good um, might be that it led to me remembering how much I actually like, you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry Sanders show, you know, getting a chance to watch, like, The Righteous Gemstones, Vice Principals, etc., etc. But anyway, they have episodes of the Chris Rock show on there. 
Every single joke in every single episode is about O.J. Simpson. I know the Chris Rock show is not necessarily... It's not hated, but it's not beloved either. But like, literally... It's, it's really weird to watch like a late night comedy show from over 20 years ago. Because they all, it, it really highlights the bizarreness, I suppose, of like every late night show starting with a monologue about current events. It's not evergreen content, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> It's like going back and watching like old episodes of The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And you're like, okay, what happened? Somebody throw a shoe at President George W. Bush today, man. You know? And then they're like, hey, musical guest, Chingy. And you're like, this is not an episode I need to watch in the modern day. This is not going to contain any information that seems relevant to my current life. <laughs> oh, you don't remember Chingy? Uh... You may remember his uh, one and only hit song, I like it when you work it right there. There was a period of hip hop music where basically every song that went to number one was just replace one of the vowels in a word with there. With, with a U, I should say, not with a there. We also had, you know, for shizzle. I knew, I knew Shizzle was done when my parents started saying it. I never said it myself because I was worried, you know, you come across like a... Like you're trying too hard. <laughs> Help. It's a weird run, dude. Like, I'm, I'm trying to bring the heat from a commentary standpoint, but I think the gas tank is like on empty. All I'm thinking about is that adult night in science world. I'm gonna give myself some delicious triple O's chicken strips. Hold the french fries, please. Do you know, so every place on earth, I'm sure, has, has weird restaurants, you know? But there's one that people in Vancouver don't recognize as weird, but it's very weird. There's an incredibly popular chain of family restaurants here called White Spot. There are so many reasons why if you were gonna name a restaurant in the year 2019, you would not call it White Spot. I think there's some obvious ones, like, um, you know, a focus group might be like, it seems like a little touchy, but then also, uh, it sounds like a stain that you'd get on a dress that could end your presidential tenure, you know? like. But I guess it's from a simpler time. And I gotta tell you, as far as family restaurants go, the food is pretty good. I've never, uh, I've never sat down in a white spot. Mostly because I try to take care of my jeans. But, you know. The other one, it has like a, a fast food offshoot like imagine if Denny's had like a Denny's Express the offshoot is called triple O's and I'm like triple O's it's not a bad name it's not as bad as white spot but it's still a little like I gotta I gotta go see an interview with like the the man who invented white spot and figure out why he named it you know I'll just look it up right now why is it called white spot A friend suggested he call it White Spot in honor of a restaurant on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, in part because the name sounded spotless and clean. Some locations have car hop service. What? <laughs> this is weird too. International locations. A location in Seoul, South Korea opened in September 2008. It is located near Dosan Park in the Apgujong neighborhood. There's always, having lived in Asia, the weirdest uh, chain restaurants managed to make it over. Like being in Japan, apparently people still love Shakey's Pizza over there. If you don't know what a Shakey's Pizza is, you can look it up. Also, TGI Fridays, very popular. In Korea, 
Bennigan's, dude. For whatever reason, all the restaurants made popular uh, again in the 21st century by their exposure on South Park apparently uh, have become popular in Asia as well. The other one, in the city I lived in, in uh, the city of Angel, in the city I lived in, in, uh, in South Korea, the hottest ticket in town was Outback Steakhouse. It was like, if you wanted to go out for like, I mean, you could go to some really, really nice places, um, but if you wanted like a pretty nice meal, people would 100% of the time suggest Outback Steakhouse. That's, to this day, the only time I've ever eaten at an Outback Steakhouse was in South Korea. And I, di I didn't get a steak. I got a, probably like a, you know, a bison burger or something like that. And I was like, it's fine. <laughs> Let me out. I'm ready, dude. This has been a landmark day for me, recording Isaac. I love this, just constantly yeeting him, torpedoing him. Hitting him with the white spot. Walking around in a circle taunting him. Like, you will never get this. You will never get this. Great series of runs today. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!